the moon in any of its phases has a mystical allure, a force that humankind has been unable to define for all of our millions of years, though we all recognize it. We celebrate its essence through ritual and myth. Every culture has a goddess who embodies the moon. She has many names and a multitude of attributes, making her as elusive as the moon itself. And this goddess is most always the keeper of secret knowledge and deep emotional wisdom. Tonight, as the week of Halloween begins, we call on the light of the moon to guide us in a reading of Moon and Mystery. Welcome fellow moon cats to the first in a series of eight special readings that will take us all the way up to Halloween night. Each of these readings is drawn from an element associated with the hallowed evening. The custom of divination at this time of year is a rich tradition as it's well known to be an auspicious time for communication with spirit. And so we will lead this series by the guidance of the light of the moon in a reading of Moon and Mystery. Moonlight is sensitive energy, which is why it works so well with crystals. Three crystals are at the center of the table, all of them sensitive to moonlight, yet each with its own unique qualities. For option one, we have an amethyst point, to stimulate the third eye and the crown chakra, empowering the psyche and providing powerful spiritual protection. For option two, we have a clear quartz cluster, a master healer raising us into high vibrational energy for spiritual growth while bringing focus to a frenzied mind. And for option three, we have a selenite pyramid linking us with higher consciousness and bringing in clear understanding. Altogether, we prepare to illuminate the hidden forces that will shape the coming year as we raise our vibration for the magical week ahead. I'll give you a moment now to make your choice, knowing that it is okay to choose more than one if that is what resonates. For those of you who chose the amethyst point, this is your reading. Amethyst is a powerful spiritual protector. And so as we go into this reading, and when you look at uh, what is affecting your life at this point, know that the spiritual protection is around you and that you have the support of your spirit guides uh, during this time. I've gone ahead and pulled a couple of Significator cards from an Oracle deck. Um, the Significator cards give us an idea of what this reading is about coming up ahead. And the first card I got from there is the, the Balsamic Moon or A Time for Healing. So in the, this coming year uh, in your life is a time when you want to focus on aspects of your life or yourself that need healing. And this is a year to focus on that and do the, some work to get your your healing completed. But there's more to it with the second card that I pulled. And this card is saying nothing will come of this situation. 
So it seems that we're we have maybe invested in something or gone down a path or a direction that simply isn't working to your best benefit anymore and that it is time to make a change or to start moving in a new direction. You can see the Celtic cross layout here on the table, but um, you might notice that one card is missing and that is just because of the amount of space on my table. So I've held the 10th card back to be revealed at the end of the reading. And um, I'm going to go ahead and let's take a look at what is affecting you um, during this time in the year ahead. Now this is the crossing card, but I'm going to take that back so we can overturn the first card in the deck. Okay. So at the present moment, um, this is a very positive energy to start moving forward, which is good because that matches the Oracle cards um, message. And we see that the person driving the chariot is very much empowered. The two creatures pulling the chariot uh, are representing a balance. Um, so we see that yin-yang symbol in the center. Uh, in the original tarot, that would be the uh, black and white lion, uh, showing that there is a balance of energy. So you are unified of purpose. And we see the shroud of stars. Um, you are divinely supported and personally empowered and ready to move forward. So we see um, these accoutrements, the, the armor that she's wearing, but this is also illustrating the heart chakra and the crown chakra being empowered and in unison. So we, we are looking for a unification of heart and mind and finding within that unification, finding that pathway forward and the energy to move on forward. And then that crossing card is, is um, the Knight of Staffs. So the Knight of Staff is all about bringing in a very positive, strong energy to burst forward. Very similar to Chariot Energy. Um, this is motivation, having the motivation to move on, to move forward. And all of that is a very good and positive, strong support for, for what you are tasked with in this year, which is to leave behind that which is no longer working, take that new path forward, and take the time to heal from the experience that didn't work out. Okay, what we see coming up ahead is the Ten of Staffs. So this card is a little, a gentle warning, um, which is saying that in all the eagerness to move forward, in all that energy that's going to be coming in, be careful not to take on too much. Uh, it can become a burden, although it doesn't need to be. It's a matter of maintaining balance. Okay. Here at the foundation, we have the Hierophant in reverse. And so this is the, the main event or moment or person that has caused the need for this reading. And when we talk about the Hierophant, we're talking about um, structure, tradition, um, 
even like a structured structured religion and to have that in reverse means perhaps this is the path that you're rejecting not wanting to do things the way that perhaps society expects them to be done for example you might be choosing not to get a college degree because you prefer to invest in yourself in another way um, another example might be rejecting the religion that you were brought up in and changing course from that so this is the major thing that's happening at this time and affecting the coming year is that that change or that choice to reject the norm reject what's standard and so it begins to make sense that um, whatever was in that structure and this could be rejection of your family structure if it's a destructive um, or dysfunctional uh, structure and just bear in mind that this is not a personal reading, it's a general reading, so there's multiple opportunities um, or multiple possibilities here. So it would seem that this isn't just a difficult choice, it's also a painful choice. And this is where that need for healing comes in and where that power of the amethyst is with you at this time, working with you at this time to protect you as you go through this change that is going to be a, uh, an emotional challenge. Uh, but as we saw in the chariot, uh, you are unified in this decision. Your heart and your mind have come together, so you are ready. You are ready to make that change and to move forward. We're taking a look at past influences. So in the past, you were not entirely sure of your convictions. You, you were indecisive. And we see here juggling. And I also get the sense of working really hard to please other people. Working really hard to be what others expect you to be. And this has taken a lot from you. This has taken a lot of your energy. This has taken a lot of your focus. And this is the, this is the response, the pattern of behavior that is going to change right now and in the coming year. So no longer being a people pleaser, but looking for what calls to your soul and what unifies you in your heart. Okay, and let's take a look at just the, what's coming up just ahead. Okay. So see, whenever we follow our heart, it truly is rewarding. And to see the Empress in the very near future, this is going to give you such comfort so much comfort and from not only that but you're going to feel secure in yourself you're going to feel like creating is easy having abundance is easy it's going to come to you more easily and that is because of making this decision not to follow the beaten path and not to worry about pleasing others anymore and we see those crowns the stars all around her head and that is to indicate that she is in unification with the divine so this is coming into your divine purpose and living a more meaningful life this is a life full of meaning full of potential full of creativity and that all comes from making that choice to break away At this time, you're in this King of Swords energy. And so this is very much um, a focus on
as the king of swords, your main concern right now is mental clarity. You're seeking the knowledge, and this is like a spiritual knowing of yourself, your truth, and this is part of what's driving everything is that that quest that you're on for that truth the ultimate truth of who you are in your authenticity okay we see the lover's card in the position of your environment or what's influencing you. And I'm seeing this in a couple of different ways. It could actually be that you've fallen in love, that you have met someone who has helped you see that you are worthy of love as you are and that it isn't necessary to be in that Two of Pentacles energy where you're trying so hard to please others because they should love you as you are, not as they want you to be. And perhaps you have met someone who's taught you this. Another possibility in this card, one will resonate with some, um, this may resonate with others, is self-unification. So this is your masculine and feminine energies uniting and then being connected to divine so we see you synthesizing the two aspects of yourself and then uh, developing that connection with the divine so we see um, Archangel Raphael this like the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve and the lover's card does not mean that there are no challenges ahead, but that we are coming into um, calmer, peaceful, happier, more positive time. Okay, so it is kind of amazing to have the devil follow the lovers because they are opposites of the same coin. The devil card is that um, negative, the negative aspect of the lovers. And, and um, how interesting in this reading where we're talking about balance, um, like with the chariot card in the beginning, to have these two aspects turn over. This card is in your hopes and fears. And so you fear the manipulation and control of other people. And it may be that you're having this fear because you have been in that experience or that energy up until now. But spirit would like for you to not focus on the fear, but focus on the great potential, looking at the empress, looking at the lovers, looking at the chariot, this beautiful, positive, powerful energy going forward. So if this is what you were dealing with in the past, um, and it, it makes a lot of sense, with the Hierophant in reverse, um, perhaps you were part of something that really was corrupt. And you have been controlled by it for a time because you've been trying so hard to make other people happy. And this could be people in your community, people in your church, or even your own family. Okay. You should be cautious. You should be aware of any relationship that is showing these aspects of manipulation and control or 
of only offering love if you are, say, do, act the way that they want you to, to speak and act. Um, these, if you have been, especially under this influence for a long time, unaware and have come into that awareness, which I think is what's happening here. Then yes, it's important to be aware of this energy and to be aware of yourself and how you're responding to it and try to be conscious enough not to go back to a place where you are trying to acquiesce or trying to please. Because the, the thing that you need to know, it doesn't matter if you're the most accomplished um, juggler in the world, it will never please the devil. Because withholding creates that energy in you that the devil that is what the devil really wants from you so the only way to break that chain is to stop trying to please the devil or the people who are acting like devils in your life now the tenth card that I'm about to flip over this card is to show the outcome of this situation going forward. And this is, again, not focusing on that devil energy, but focusing on the energy of the chariot, the empress, the king of swords, the lovers. That is the positive change. The positive change going forward that is just going to leave you in such a place of self-love and comfort. And so we get our outcome in this card. And we have the Page of Cups. And I'm smiling now because there's so much beautiful potential in that. First of all, the fact that it's a page means that you are in control of your own outcome, which is beautiful because that means you're not under the manipulation of others anymore. And I see this hot air balloon Um <laughs> And this hot air balloon is uh, either bringing the cup in or, or flying it away. Uh, but that is just like the freedom. The freedom of uh, floating away from all that which no longer serves you. And to have the page of cups is to have the beautiful beginning of something that is fulfilling to your soul on an emotional, psychological level. And it is the beautiful start of all of that. So the coming year may challenge you in some ways. And I want to bring that up. I'm just going to set the 10th card because there just wasn't enough space on the table. I'm just going to set it where we can see it. Okay, so to have a little talk about all of this. In the coming year, you may be challenged. Because when we have had an experience or a cycle of time where we have been wrong footed, not because we were making a mis mistake or bad or anything like that, but because this is the path of life. Sometimes we go down the wrong, the wrong part of the maze for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> because it has been a long time in that energy of the manipulation and control of others, you may see devil energy coming up around you. Because when we need to close a cycle, a karmic cycle, then that thing repeats 
that thing comes around again. And it is to give you the opportunity to show to yourself, to spirit, to the universe, that you truly are done with that experience and don't choose to have it anymore. And the important point about that, the page coming out in the 10th card, card space, means you are in control. So you must remember that you are in control of your own life and that it is your decision whether or not you're going to allow someone to be in devil energy with you. And it can be so difficult, I understand, especially when these are people we love, people like our parents or our siblings or even a longtime friend who have been there a long time and it gets entangled, it gets difficult, and it hurts, and it's sorrowful because it means extracting yourself from someone that you may care very much about. So in the year to come, when you, it does feel painful and sorrowful, make sure you're taking the time to acknowledge those feelings in yourself and give them space for expression, whether this is artistically or just in meditation or even talking with a trustworthy friend or counselor because you're going to need to heal those wounds. And even though you're the one making the decision to leave, that doesn't mean that you're not wounded. Okay, so just remember all of these stars in the crown that we've been seeing in the chariot, in the empress, Divine is present at this time, and with the choice of the amethyst point, we know that divine is protecting you at this time to help you make those changes that you need to make, and then also to protect you as you heal from the pain that these decisions may cause. Okay, I'm going to pull a few more um, oracle cards so that we can have guidance and advice on the year going ahead. The first card here is the void. This card is very relevant to everything that we have been talking about because um, the void is about taking time to rest and reset, leaving behind that which no longer serves you, and not resisting. Don't resist the change. Embrace, the, embrace that change going forward. Uh, resistance would only cause more turmoil and cause a delay. Um, going with the flow of this change is the best way to carry yourself positively forward. I also want to bring up the idea that what follows this is the new moon and that is filled with light filled with um, positive energy. This is um, a new cycle of life that's going to follow this time of void. And this is a time to, this is a creative time to think of the path ahead and how we would like for that path to feel, to manifest, to, to be experienced. Uh, nowhere to put the cards. Okay. The second card we had is the masculine. 
So this is an extremely important time for you to be in union with your masculine energy. And this could be whether whatever your gender may be or whatever your gender identity may be. We're just talking about the the energy of the driving force in life. Okay, so this is taking action in the world as we move forward. I will remind you of the caution of the Ten of Staffs, though. Um, you're going to be charged with all this energy to, to, to live life fully and freely and, and to develop your new path or forge your new path along the way. And it's going to be a lot to take on at once. So just make sure that you're not taking on too much and that you are taking the time to rest as needed, which is in this void card uh, and in the early oracle cards that we received. Our third oracle card is sovereignty. This is to remind you that the decisions of your life are completely under your rule. You rule your life, not anyone else. And it is easy, it is easy to fall into that people-pleasing pattern where, you know, dad wants me to be a lawyer, so that's what I'm going to do. Or mom says I have to be an accountant because it's sensible. Um, or something along that nature, or even simply being, uh, exhibiting certain personality traits. When you're around, um, those kind of people, because that is what, the, where they want you to be. And spirit is reminding you, no, you are the, you are the queen of the moon. So you rule your own psyche. You rule your own uh, inner wisdom, which I know that that didn't come out clearly. Uh, what that means is people will try to hurt you. That's that's the way of this world. There will always be someone. But whether or not that gets through into your soul, that is your choice. You can't stop them from making the choice to try. But you can stop from absorbing that into your soul. And you can. Uh, you have the sovereignty to say, I don't want that to be part of me. And to let it go, or to let it bounce off, or fly away. It is also important going forward as we make these changes to remember that sovereignty is what we're fighting for. Personal dignity. All right. And the final card is a very fortuitous card. This is of the blue moon. This is the unexpected. So this means that rare and valuable experiences lie ahead. Not all of them may be positive. It's true. There can be challenges along the way. But the main thing here is to trust in yourself and trust in your life path that it is leading you somewhere good. We have our outcome card, that page of cups. And that is a very beautiful start to something that 
has great potential for growth. So as you are going into this, this new way of life, uh, it's going to be important to set intentions and to consider even what your intentions are. Uh, that is going to help you balance uh, your workload so that you're not ending up in the Ten of Staffs energy. Okay, so it seems in the year past, we've been through something extremely difficult. And this has had to do with some kind of structure, like a family structure or a religious structure, where you were just juggling, flailing around, trying to please everyone around you. And that now it is time to stop, come into your own sovereignty and full speed ahead in a new direction, which is in union with your heart and your mind. And also, that puts you in union with the divine. So that concludes our reading for those who chose the Amethyst Point. And the, I hope you have enjoyed your reading of Moon and Mystery. Uh, please stay tuned to my channel. For in the week ahead, there are going to be more specialized uh, Halloween-themed readings uh, preparing for this very magical time of the year. Uh, there will be a playlist on my channel uh, for these, these special readings, and uh, that playlist is called the Halloween Readathon. Uh, there's going to be a total of eight readings in, in the playlist. And if you strike the notification bell, you will receive a notice when each new video is posted. For now, i just like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in another video. For those of you who chose the Clear Quartz Cluster, this is your reading. So welcome to the reading of Moon and Mystery. We're going to take a look now through the, the Celtic Cross to the, the remainder of this year and the, the influencing forces for the coming year. So we're taking a broad look at what is in the sphere of your life at this time. What energies are there? What people are there? Uh, what personal issues or motivations are there, and what is going to drive you through the next life cycle. Now you chose the Clear Quartz Cluster, and this is a master healer, um, as I said before, and it's good for raising vibrational energy. It's particularly good for bringing focus to a scattered mind, or or um, the word that I liked was frenzied. Uh, this is a mind that's just an over, overactive, overdrive all the time. So there may be something that has, uh, uh caused you to be in that state or some, some reason that the desire for that focus is there. And so we're going to get into that as we get into the reading. Now I pulled some oracle cards. I like to use oracle cards as significators to help guide the reading. And um, the first card that we have here is a personal issue reaches revolution, full moon in Cancer. So the full moon in Cancer is very, very sensitive emotionally and so this is um this personal issue that needs resolution uh this is something that is a very sensitive issue to you and um this is something that is going to occur throughout the coming year so that is the focus of this year is 
to find that resolution. Don't know the details yet about what the, the that situation is, but we'll see that in the coming reading. Okay. Um, this card also came out, the second card. Blue moon, believe in the impossible. Um, we're all familiar with the phrase once in a blue moon. So it's something that is very rare and very good that is coming up ahead for you. And your, your spirit guides want you to know that you should believe in the impossible because this is going to happen for you in the coming year. And what follows that is a new romantic cycle. A new romantic cycle begins with New Moon in Libra. I usually only just pull one or two of these, but cards kept flying out of the deck when I shuffled. So um, there's quite a lot going on in your year ahead. This is an important year for you. And then the other... The final card that came out was New Moon and Scorpio, which is about uh, working through your fears. So this, this is another emotional sign or water sign, so that we are dealing with a lot of emotional issues in the year ahead. So work through your fears. This has followed the... Um, the card of romance, the card of a new romance. And that may be where the issues lie, um, where the emotional struggle is, is perhaps with, um, with our experience with romance. Okay, turning to the tarot in the Celtic Cross now, um, you'll notice that one card is missing on the table. And that is because I just don't have the room. So the tenth card I have held back to be revealed at the end of the reading. Okay. I gotta remove the second card to get to the first. The first card to come up uh, is to tell us about what is happening in your present situation. And the first card to come up is the Six of Cups. So this represents nostalgia, looking back into childhood or childhood memories. This could be uh, wallowing in like the, the happiness of childhood and not wanting to, well, not wanting to grow up. But I think that there might be something more to this because we have been looking at uh, working through fear and we have been looking at uh, resolving personal issues and so this may very well be an unhappy childhood and that has left some effects upon you and that it's time to resolve those and to clear them from your space. Now what's crossing the Six of Cups and can either be helpful or harm, or <coughs> it can be an obstacle. But what we have here is the Magician. Major Arcana and very powerful card. It means as above, so below. It's a card of manifestation that you bring your dreams into reality. What it is that you want to accomplish or do now is a good time. Now the way that it crosses that Six of Cups, I can feel a link between the two cards and it feels like the Six of Cups is acting like an anchor. Like it's pulling this card back down. And I think that um, I 
I feel that this magician is being tied down by issues left over from childhood. So your ability to manifest the life that you want, your ability to create, um, to have a life that is, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word, magical. So a magical life is one where you're just living your best life because it's coming from your natural gifts, your natural talents, your natural abilities. It's living a life that resonates with your soul. The Magician card is about making that happen, bringing that into reality, being able to manifest um, that from as above, so below, so from your soul into the world. And the reason why this is crossed is is almost a little um, backwards. It's not that the Six of Cups is being blocked, but that the Magician is being held back or being weighed down or mm, anchored, being anchored by the issues in this in nostalgia. So something in childhood is blocking you from being able to live your best life. And um, this is where we're going to want to see um, more about those issues and, and what exactly it is. But moving ahead, moving forward, moving up mo ahead, we're going to look at what is the best possible outcome, the best goal for you to have, is to become like the King of Staffs. So the King of Staffs is a very creative individual and is able to manifest a stable life from a creative endeavor. And so it seems that you may be an artistic individual or um, have a creative purpose in the world. And what we want to do is, is head towards that goal. So wands are a very creative force. They are life force energy. And that's bringing not just um, to be in creative energy, but to make that into something physical, something real in the world that is manifested by the creative energy that you're in. And so the king of staffs is successful in that. Okay, and we're going to... We'll put that there. Okay, and so what we want to do now is look at what's underlying all of this. What has brought this about? And what we have here is a Five of Cups. Okay. So the issues that you're dealing with, this has, this has already happened, or it's happening now. Um what you're dealing with is a loss. This can be a card of bereavement. It could also be a romantic investment that didn't turn out, which is why we have the spilled cups, spilled emotions. Um, the Five of Cup cards does hold promise. Because of the two cups that remain standing. This is to say, for example, we go through a romantic relationship that doesn't work out. And there's heartbreak and there's sorrow. But there is also something in that experience that has given you a couple of gifts. Like the gift of insight or something you've learned from the experience that's going to help you going forward. The point is that it's not a total loss. Um, if this is bereavement, what we're saying is um, lo the love of that person remains alive and well. The experience of having had that person in your life is more important than the spilled cups. Because the the experience of having had that person in your life is has given you 
something valuable and probably more than one, just one valuable thing. Okay. Now we're going to look at the recent past and what has uh, brought us here. And for this card, we have the King of Swords. This can be a card of divorce. It can be seen that way. That could explain a lot of the bereavement and the nostalgia. Um, I was thinking of childhood, but nostalgia can be a more recent past than that. And the King of Swords has a powerful insight, a very clarifying insight. So that makes me think of the the clear quartz cluster for bringing bringing focus in to a frenzied mind. So something has happened recently to bring you clarity, to bring you into focus. And that's um, what part of the influence here as well. Now what all of this is leading to is a Knight of Staffs. Now this is very good because we have the King of Staffs up here as the goal. That's where we want to be. So if in the very near future you're in this energy, then you're on your way there. You're on your way to that successful moment where you have established yourself in a creative field. Uh, the Knight of Staffs is bringing that energy in and charging forward with it. So this in your very near future you are beginning down that path that is taking you to the ultimate goal of the king of staffs energy the card that represents you okay this is the five of swords this is a card of defeat and it says that there was something you fought for, something you fought hard for, and lost. This could be dealing with... I'm so sorry because the, the word cancer just came to mind. And we had the card of bereavement, so it could be that someone lost their battle. Um, with cancer and that you are grieving that person and that message is there for someone um, <clears throat> it just came to mind as, as I was pulling this up I have never had that association with this card before um, which was a bit of a surprise but that message is out there for someone and it's confirmation for someone uh, that uh, spirit is aware of your grief and supporting you at this time. What's to be known about the Five of Swords is even though it is a card of defeat, it is also about collecting yourself after the battle. Collecting yourself and moving forward. Now in a case of bereavement, it feels like the cruelest thing to have to do. But when you put one foot in front of the other and you start moving, you'll find that it is very possible. And just remember, you haven't lost all the cups. Some of them are coming with you. So you're carrying forward that love that remains and that love is real and alive. And just remember that that can always, always continue to be part of your life. Okay, we're looking at environmental influences. Here we have the Ace of Swords. All right, the Ace of Swords is such a very powerful, positive card. This is auspicious for every aspect of your life. That means everything is, is given this powerful, positive force. 
And this Ace of Swords overpowers any negative card that, that is here. This is a wonderful, not just success, but recovery, a healing, a moving forward that overcomes all of the difficulty. This is a success at overcoming all of that. Moving forward. And this is in your environment right now. So you are currently in that process. And just know that this coming year is going to be about moving on from this moment of grief or sorrow and embracing this Ace of Swords energy and establishing the life that is your best life. We have the Magician, the Knight of Staffs, the King of Staffs. You're on your way to it. You're on your way to your best life. And that is happening right now. It's beginning right now. And it's going to continue to grow and establish through the coming year. In your hopes and fears, we have the Queen of Staffs. The Queen is also extremely creative. Is This is wand energy. Uh, and a lot of the same powers as the King, this is about manifesting a creative life. And with the Queen, we're also talking about manifesting beautiful relationships. So this would be romantic relationships, friendships, family relationships. It's having sovereignty over that area of life. So the queen is the ruler of happy, balanced, positive, interpersonal relationships. And this is a hope for your life. This is a hope that is present in your life. It's not just something you wish for, but it is a potential energy that's balancing right now in the in spirit so it's it's it has the potential to manifest okay and this is something that also you can be working towards now we're looking now to the 10th card our 10th card is the final outcome as we are going through all of this and what's what's interrupting my thought what keeps interfering because spirit wants me to point it out is that we in our um, oracle cards the message is there believe in the impossible spirit wants me to point out that when we talk about the magician and the king of staffs and that creative, beautiful, best life, this ace of swords energy, all of those cards together about creating and succeeding at creating your personal best life, believe it because this is happening and in fact is not impossible. And we talk about um, that queen of staffs energy and king of staffs energy this is a, a balance of, of, of similar individuals who resonate with each other. Your, your oracle cards also were speaking about a new romantic cycle. So it may just be that as you're pursuing establishing this, um, best life of whatever in, in that creative endeavor is for you, um, that may be where and how you meet your life partner. And this grief and sorrow that you've been dealing with, uh, Spirit wanted me to point back again to this, the full moon and cancer card because it is, it is telling you that these personal issues will reach resolution. When we speak of bereavement, that is a grief that we live with. It, it doesn't, it's never just healed and done and gone. 
but we find a way to live and carry on. And we do that by remembering that the love is alive and that we take it with us. Okay. So the outcome of all of this now that, now that I've gotten that out and we can move forward, the outcome of all of this is the Four of Cups card. Okay. So understandably, though we hope and wish for that Queen of Staffs outcome, it may, it's going to be challenging for you. And in, understandably so, because you have been through something very heartbreaking. So to just turn around and accept new love, new relationships, new friendships, can be a very difficult thing to do. So in the Four of Cups, this person is looking at the ones that didn't work out or the ones that hurt and being very defensive. So this would be the traditional, the image on the traditional um, Rider White Tarot, Rider White Smith. And in that traditional card, there is the hand of spirit offering the new cup. Like this is this is beautiful and good and it's a gift from spirit and they're offering it and yet with the defensiveness from past experiences the individual in the card is unable to accept it. This is going to be a challenge for you in this year to come as you meet new new people, new friends and perhaps even a new love to be able to see the gifts that they bring to you instead of the fear of how it might turn into sorrow or pain. If you can overcome that fear and embrace that new cup, then you are going to bring that beautiful gift from spirit into your life. And so moving forward, this is a challenge that you're going to have throughout the course of this year. Now, I can't put this in its proper place because I just don't have the room on the table. So I'm going to put it right up here so at least you can see it. Okay. So the, we understand that we're, we're going through a very important and momentous uh, cycle here. And I want to pull some more cards because... When I'm speaking of moon and mystery, which is what this reading is, um, I thinking of the ritual, the Wiccan ritual of drawing down the moon. Um, and this ritual is about invoking the goddess into the high priestess, uh, brings the goddess into her body and speaks with the voice of the goddess. So, what we're doing is looking for that kind of guidance. Um, if you were to approach this oracle of the goddess of the moon, what would your questions be to her? And what would you want to know? And what would you want to receive from her? So in this case, I see that those who chose this crystal quartz of course, your mind may be distracted because you have this deep emotional pain. And what's happening right now is you're starting to come out of that into a time of focus. But what help, what guidance, what assistance can this goddess of the moon provide? And remember that the moon is very sensitive energy and it deals with emotions with respect for the emotional side of life. And so I'm bringing forward now um, some cards from the Queen of the Moon Oracle. The first card we have here is protection. Look at how that bird is carrying this woman in the nest. This is spirit making sure that you can carry forward 
helping you, assisting you to carry forward, doing the work and allowing you to rest, allowing you to heal, to be sensitive, to be vulnerable, and to be protected, all the while moving you forward on, on your path. And so the main message that the goddess would like for you to receive is that Oh, she's here for you. She's here for you to protect you and watch over you and make sure that you're all right moving forward on your path. So here we have the card of surrender. This is taking what you're struggling with and just stop struggling with it give it to spirit the goddess wants you to know that you're safe to surrender you're protected as you surrender that the divine will help will help with the struggle will will resolve the struggle if you just release relax and allow divine to work through you. And our final bit of guidance from the goddess is to release. It could be that all this time, whatever conflict of emotions you've been holding down deep, uh, unable to even acknowledge or process the full scope of the emotions that you're holding on to. There is so much power in the moment of release because in this moment uh, It is like the clouds clear away and the sun comes out. I know this is the moon card, but uh, okay, let's use a full moon as an example then. Um, it is like the clouds part and the full moon comes out and you are suddenly in this ray of light. When you release a burden that has anchored you, when you release the emotions that have been holding you down whether you realize it or not suddenly it's like you're floating on air you are going to find yourself infused with a strong positive energy and that um spirit wants me to point out that this resonates with that ace of swords energy and know that this is absolutely in your environment right now. That this, this release is possible. And that this positive energy is here for you right now. Okay. All right, well, this concludes our reading of Moon and Mystery. I hope that you have enjoyed it. And I hope that I have given you something of value that will support you as you go through this process in the coming year. I thank you for watching my video and I'm inviting you to tune into my channel because I am creating a, a Halloween readathon for each night uh, for one week leading up to Halloween. I am posting a specialized video with a particular theme that has uh, some association with the celebration of Halloween. And so I hope that this, these readings all together will prepare you for that magical moment, Halloween night, when uh, manifestation is, is most accessible. Okay, so again, I thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in another video.
For those of you who chose the Selenite Pyramid, this is your reading. Welcome to the reading of Moon and Mystery. Uh, in this reading, we're going to look at the influences that are present currently and what effect they're going to have throughout the coming year. Uh, this reading is uh, styled after the ritual of drawing down the moon. And in that ritual, a high priestess takes the goddess into her body and becomes the goddess in order to act as an oracle for those present. So what we're looking for here is divine guidance. And when we speak of the divinity of the moon, we're talking about our more sensitive emotional areas of life. The selenite that you chose works to bring you into higher consciousness so that you can get a clear overall understanding of what's going on in your life at this time. Now, uh, to start the reading, I like to choose some cards that are from an oracle as our significator cards, or in other words, as what the theme of the reading coming up is going to be. What's the main me overall message? And the first card that I have is the New Moon Eclipse. Expect powerful change. So what's coming ahead in the year for you is going to be a very powerful um, and important change in your life that's coming up. And that's followed by um, this card, Conclusions Are Within Reach. So it may be uh, that you have been struggling with some questions or direction and that this is now, very soon now, going to come to a conclusion. Now we're going to get more details as we go into the Celtic Cross reading here at the table. And I just want to point out, if you are familiar with the Celtic Cross, then you'll notice that one card is missing. Uh, that is because I just don't have the room on the table. And the tenth card is back uh, just I've, here with me, and I'll reveal that at the end of the reading. Okay, so let's begin um, getting into your Celtic Cross. In the first position is the Five of Staffs. Now in the first position, what we're looking at is what's in your energy at this present moment? What's going on right now? And what's going on right now for you is conflict. So we, there's... Um, this would be not physical conflict, but arguments, uh, disagreements, uh, a fiery exchange of opin differing opinions, or just an inability to work together or get along. Okay, so again, it's not a physical conflict, but it's, it's uh, definitely conflict in your <clears throat> present life, excuse me. Okay. Now the card that was crossing that is the Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles is about money coming in. So despite all of this tension around you, this may be where you're focusing your time right now is on your Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is a generous generous flow of money so <clears throat> it's not <clears throat> the most abundant uh, pentacle card in the deck but this would be like enough enough pentacles coming in to have a, a good foundation uh, a secure foundation in your life
Moving on ahead, we, we turn to the third position card is the Hierophant. Now, in the third position, what we're looking at <coughs> is what is the highest goal to achieve here? What, where, what are we, what's the point of what we're doing? What are we heading towards? What, what do we want to accomplish? And the Hierophant here, when I see that along with the Pentacles coming in, there is, this is about creating structure and organization around your money. So this may be like, um, the starting of a business or something organizational, foundational, um, to help manage your money coming in. Down here at the foundation, this is what's underlying everything. So definitely you have money on your mind at this time. The Page of Pentacles is creating a new idea for this new way of bringing in money and giving this idea to the universe. So we see him lifting it up to the malls here in the garden. And look how the moon is right there. Um, so it seems that at this time, what's happening with you right now Perhaps at your current workplace, there's this tension and it's driving you to seek a new way, a new way of earning money, something that uh, it maybe is uh, your own idea. And this idea, given structure, brings a good amount of money in for you. We're going to take a look now at what is in the past. Okay, and we have the Ace of Staffs. Now, this would have been very recently in the past and not too far behind the present moment. So, what we're looking at here is that energy to create. And so, I see now how the this energy to create leads you to this moment where now you've got the idea that you're ready to give into the universe. Uh, an Ace of Staffs is very powerful and auspicious for every aspect of your life. What's very fitting here is that an Ace of Wands can also represent a new enterprise. And, and it looks like that's what's happening here. Uh, this coming year, it looks to that your main focus is going to be on this fresh start, uh, making this business of your own into a reality, giving it physical structure, and um, creating a plan to help it to move forward. Now, with the Page of Pentacles, there is a kind of, uh, not warning, but the advice. The advice from the Page of Pentacles is to mind the details. Make sure you're taking care of all the details of the paperwork that you need to be doing. Okay, we're looking ahead now to the near future. And we see the Queen of Staffs. Now, the Queen of Staffs, again, has very powerful uh, creative energy. So we're continuing to create, perhaps create and evolve this enterprise. But also an important aspect of the Queen is her ability to network. So this is that card of building foundational relationships. Um, so this could be networking for a business to help with those pentacles coming in. Taking a look at you right now, you are in King of Swords energy. Now you do not have to be a man to be in King of Swords energy. It is being in the masculine aspect of yourself, whether your physical gender is that or not. Um, this is talking about a spiritual energy. And the King of Swords, he is ruling from logic and from the mind. The King is an intellectual person uh, who's using 
logic and the intellect uh, to navigate the world, to to do what needs to be done. Um, that being in the position that it's in, this card is saying to take charge, take control of the situation. Now above that, the next one is taking a look at your environment. What energy is in your environment at this time? And we have the Nine of Swords. This is the card. This is a card of suffering. This is a card of stress. This is such extreme emotional stress that you're unable to sleep at night. Uh, you know, tossing and turning and having uh, just a painful existence at the moment. This is currently what is surrounding you, and it may have to do with that conflict. So now I'm getting uh, the word family. The word family just came to me. And the idea here is of breaking away from the family business to start an idea of your own. And this is causing conflict around you. Now that goes back to that first card, the five of staffs. So at this time, this is a painful conflict. These are painful conflicts to be in. So when we look at that Five of Staffs card, I'm going to bring that back out again. There's multiple people with very strong opinions. And the important part or the important advice from this card would be to hold your ground. Uh, so... I see that these conflicts are wearing you out. They're putting you in a place of stress. But if you hold your ground and stay true to your idea, being authentic as is called upon by the King of Swords. Okay, you can look at the King of Swords too as with his logical and intellectual ability, being able to cut through the crap. So if people are putting guilt upon you that you do not deserve or stress upon you that is not yours to bear, the King of Swords has the ability to cut through that by seeing the truth with his logic and his intellect. And so this is your masculine aspect asserting itself, coming forward, taking charge and saying, you know, uh, well, no to this guilt, no to this stress, and making the choice to be authentic to himself or his or herself and to pursue that one idea that is most important. Okay, so that may be this this idea for the new pentacle for how to bring in pentacles, this new page of pentacles idea. And so you're going to do this responsibly. Building your new idea is uh, not going to be reckless. There's a lot of planning, cards of structure and planning and study here. So the Hierophant uh, achieves his power from uh Hot, large amounts of study and and practice and so he becomes uh, a scholar and to earn his position the page of pentacles is a stage of planning the queen of staffs is networking so I see you slowly and carefully building up to this change. But when you do make this change in your life, as the Oracle card has said, it's going to be a powerful move. It's going to be a very powerful move. And right now, all that conflict surrounding you is causing lots of stress. But your Oracle cards remind you that a conclusion to this conflict is within reach. When it gets to the point, excuse me, 
when it gets to the point where your plans are coming into fruition and you are proving that you're going to follow your authentic self regardless of their arguments against you or regardless of the stress that they cause, that is going to resolve the conflict because there is no longer any reason for them to put that upon you. This next card is hopes and fears. And I see here that you fear defeat. You fear perhaps the stress will be too much. You fear that your new idea may not succeed. And I would say in this case, to hasten back to all the way to the past, the recent past, and how there was this Ace of Staffs card. Because this is a powerful, lucky energy or positive energy of creation that is coming from heaven to earth. So if you have this in the most recent past, this is more powerful than your fear of the Five of Swords. It overpowers that potential in your energy for a defeat. I would advise you to just focus on the idea that has come in at this time and also on the planning for how to make that into a reality. If you focus on the creative idea and you focus on the planning, then we will have an outcome. And let's take a look at that. All right. So our 10th card, which is the overall outcome by the end of the year, and I'm seeing the world card here. So this is complete success. This is publicly acknowledged success. This is leveling up in life. And so absolutely positively powerful um, encouragement to just go ahead and follow what it is that makes you authentic. Follow this idea to its completion. Steadily and carefully, but you will do it. Okay, now those who are familiar with the Celtic Cross, yes, I, am, I know that I just put that card in the wrong place. But I did that so that it's still visible on camera because, again, I, I have limited space on my table. Okay. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this um, reading is based on the drawing down the moon. And so we're looking for guidance and advice as we go step ahead and go through this experience. So I have an some oracle cards from the Queen of the Moon Oracle. And the first card that you have from that is Beauty. And true to its word, this card is so beautiful and so lovely because her face has been built. Well, the face has been built out of nature plants in nature and the general shapes of that. This card is not speaking of external physical beauty. It's speaking of a more philosophical concept of beauty, which is about harmony. It's about being in harmony with yourself, being in harmony with your soul desires. Uh, being working on yourself internally so that you are authentic. You are your most authentic self. And that is what beauty is, um, according to this card. And the next card you have is purity. And we see that really white landscape. The snow. In the snow. And <clears throat> speaking of purity, this is about intention. 
What is your intention as you begin to create and build and make pentacles? What is your, your true intention for the outcome here? Uh, so there, there is divine support and assistance as, <clears throat> As you make this change or you make this decision, even though the decision that you're making seems to be a controversial one at the moment. You have, <clears throat> you have the ability to succeed in a great way to get the world card. Um, definitely overpowers anything else that's on the table and that world card is saying you've arrived at your moment at, at the at a moment of peak success so sometimes there's moments in life where we have to leave people behind or we have to leave situations behind so this could be a, a workplace that really isn't working for you or this could be a, a dysfunctional family or just one member of the family whatever the case may be it is in your best interest to do that because it's about truth. It's about having and holding on to the truth and being guided by the truth. Um, it's that King of Swords again. Uh, the King of Swords is the ruler who rules by the power of the sword. And in tarot, the sword is that logic, knowledge, knowing, and truth. So letting the truth be your guide, leading your life, ruling your life through the power of the truth. And that is what ultimately will take you to your success. Okay, so that concludes our moon, our reading of moon and mystery. And I hope that you have enjoyed the reading. And I hope that you have found something valuable here. I invite you to go to my channel and check out the Halloween Readathon playlist that I am creating. And for the whole week leading up to Halloween, there will be one new video each night that is based on uh, some kind of Halloween theme. And I think that they should be very entertaining and interesting readings and hopefully very informative ones as well. If you do enjoy this content, please like, share, or subscribe, as it does help my channel to grow. And even though I'm new, I do intend to keep on growing the content. All right, so thank you now for watching, and I hope to catch you in another video.